this segment of the property market is collapsing and what it means for property prices is scary. Today, I'm going to do a deep dive into the data. I'll share a number of charts with you so that you can make an informed decision about what's likely to happen to the property market going forwards. Let's dive in. Hello, it's Nero here. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button because I talk about all things related to the property market and the economy. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has released the latest data about dwelling approvals, the number of new properties set to be built, and the data doesn't look good. The total number of dwellings approved fell 6.1% in August to 13,991. That's for the month. Now, it's no secret that we have a housing crisis in Australia, not enough properties for the number of people who need them. The federal government has a target of building 1.2 million homes in five years. So that's an average of 240,000 new properties per year or 20,000 properties per month. And here we are building less than 14,000. So we're 30% below target. And the original target of 1.2 million homes was unlikely to be enough to begin with. And we're now 30% below that. Before I share with you the double whammy effect this will have on property prices, let's first have a look at why we're unable to build the number of homes we require. Tim Lawless, who's the head of research at CoreLogic said, construction costs have risen by more than 30% over the past four to five years. So that in itself has really compressed profit margins, he said. Labor markets for building trades are extraordinarily tight and there's also a lot of competition with the non-residential sector. Put simply, it just costs more to build these days. And as we can see in this next chart, which tracks ABS construction cost index and national dwelling commencement, what you can see is that the blue vertical bars, that's looking at the construction costs. And you can see that's risen quite significantly, especially since 2020, 2021. And yet look at the lines pointing downwards. That's the number of new properties being built. You can see that as costs have risen, fewer properties are being built. But then we have another problem which is making it even more difficult to build properties. Last week, Mervac Chief Executive Campbell Hannon told a city investment conference panel that there's just not enough builders to build the homes because they're busy with all the government infrastructure work. Now this is talking about Sydney, but it does apply nationwide. New South Wales Treasurer Daniel Mukhi agreed, telling the conference that big infrastructure projects divert labor from housing construction. He said the government therefore needed to reduce its infrastructure spending. So it's a real chicken and egg problem. We don't have enough infrastructure on the one hand. On the other hand, we don't have enough properties for the number of people who need them. And we have the same pool of workers across both sets of projects. So where do you divert your attention? The fact is though, that because there's a lack of people who, to do the work, labor costs are rising, which is obviously driving construction costs. The other thing as well to consider is that a lot of people are now going to work in the mines when they could work in construction. So therefore, to get these people to work in residential construction, their incomes need to increase, which again, increases the cost of construction. So we have this perfect storm happening in terms of property prices, where it's costing more to build properties, which will increase the cost of houses, number one. Number two, we have a huge supply shortage, not enough properties for the number of people who need them. So demand is higher than supply. The cost of supply is increasing, which means then that the cost of houses will naturally increase as well. So we have a twin impact here on property prices, which will continue to force property prices higher. So if you think property prices are unaffordable right now, and we know that they are the most unaffordable they've ever been, 
they're actually more than likely going to get even more expensive in the coming years. But then you might say, yeah, Nero, but what about all that stuff we're seeing in the media about how there's more properties on the market in multiple areas than there have been in recent time, how property prices are starting to fall in multiple areas. What about that? Well, have a look at this chart from Ray White, which tracks Australian house prices since 2006. There is no doubt that there have been certain periods of time when property prices have fallen back slightly. That is fact. However, look at the chart. Look at the data for a moment. How major have these property price corrections been? Number one. Number two, what has happened after property prices have sort of gone flat for a while or slightly sideways? Well, prices have risen. And what's happened whenever interest rates have been cut, which are the yellow vertical bars, what's happened to property prices? They've increased significantly. So what then do you take away from this? After all, on one hand, you have talk about more listings coming onto the market. Yes, that is true in many areas around Australia. However, that does not apply to everywhere around the country. What we are seeing is that the more expensive markets, that's where it applies to. That's where there has been an increase in listings. Whereas if you're looking in areas where properties are priced say below $800,000, we're not seeing that massive increase in the number of properties for sale. Generally speaking, there are always exceptions, but generally speaking, it is the more expensive properties where there has been a slight increase in the number of listings. So then does that mean that property prices are going to crash? Well, looking at the data that I just showed you, the fact is that even when there have been certain times where there has been a correction in property prices on a median price point level, they have not been major. The second thing is that as you saw earlier on, we have a massive supply shortage that is coming onto the market. Demand is going to be higher than supply. And as more and more people who are reaching out to us say, Nira, we want to buy before interest rates fall because we know people who are waiting for interest rates to fall so their borrowing capacities can increase, so they can jump in and either buy their first home, their first investment property, their next property, whatever the case happens to be. And when that demand comes onto the market, because we know that with interest rates currently being in the RBA's target band, the economy really grinding to a halt, that interest rates are going to be cut at some point in the future. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. And when that happens, that demand will increase, which means property prices are likely to rise quite significantly. And that's why I think we could be in for a major price boom. That's why I'm of the opinion that if you can afford to buy, and if you can find the right property in the right area, this is a great window of opportunity to take advantage of the negativity in the media, the fact that many people are being scared off. Many people, for example, in the comments will go to town saying that the market is going to crash and it and absolutely has to and it's overdue. They are totally 100% wrong. The property market in Australia is in crisis mode. We don't have enough properties. New construction is collapsing. Not enough people will be able to find a home to live in or even to rent in many areas, which is gonna cause all sorts of issues, yes, but it will also force property prices higher and quite significantly in many areas where the supply shortage is the biggest. So if you wanna take advantage of the opportunity that's available right now, if you can afford to and buy a property in the right area, there is a strong, strong chance that you will look back and realize it was one of the best financial decisions you made. On the flip side, if you can afford to buy property and you choose not to, it's quite likely that in as little as six months time, you will look back with regret, wishing you had bought earlier.